Hello everybody and welcome to today's daily vlog from Kimmel Bay Church. I wonder if you remember that last time I was vlogging, I reflected on how marvellous it was to hear again and again the stories of Jesus. Now we're submerged in the wonder of all that Jesus did as he walked the hills of Galilee and Judea. Do you know, if I had a time machine, I would definitely use it to go back and experience being there. Perhaps not in the boat being sick on the Lake of Galilee, but definitely the wedding with the best wine on offer and the picnic for 5,000 people. I praise God for Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, who recorded the miracles for in such a way that if we would just stop for a minute and close our eyes and soak in the whole atmosphere, we could almost be there. Shall we give it a try today? I hope you're up for joining in. So let's begin by thinking about the setting for today's well-known story, The Paralysed Man, or The Four Guys and Their Paralysed Friends. With using the account in Luke chapter 5, and we're starting at verse 17. So let's read what it says. One day, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village in Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Men who wanted to see Jesus couldn't get into the house because of the crowd. So here we are. Jesus is teaching. People are listening. It's hot because we're in Galilee, but everybody's crowded into the house. The Gospel of Mark tells us that this house is in Capernaum, down by the lakeside, and that it's a village of about 1,500 people, mostly fishing families. It's not a very quiet place, so no wonder people crowded close to Jesus to hear all that he was saying, despite it being uncomfortable. And in the front, on the seats where everybody could see, there were the religious leaders. They turned up in numbers. That was enough to bring tension, but that's not what's in the air. We might have found it hard to describe what it was, but Luke is certain that he knows. It's the power to heal. Something is going to happen. There's a noise outside. How does the gospel describe it? Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. So here we are, back imagining. Noise at the doorway, then the thuds of uh, adult steps as they go up the side of the house and onto the roof. And then something altogether amazing, scrabbling, ripping, dust, a hole above our heads, and Jesus right there. And then a large bundle comes through the hole and down on the ground and lays at Jesus' feet. Now you can see who's on the bundle. It's not just a bundle, it's a local paralysed man and he's on his mat and the friends are up above looking down through the hole. A healing is definitely what's going to happen. Wow, won't that be brilliant for the man and how exciting to be there and how annoying for the religious leaders. But he doesn't go quite as you think it might. When Jesus saw their faith, Luke says, he said, friends, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, I'm sure if we were there, we would have heard an audible intake of breath. The Pharisees, because this is blasphemy. And from us, because this is amazing. No one ever says things like that. Let's read the rest of the, of the text. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fella who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralysed man, 
I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he'd been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. The writer of the Essential Jesus booklet that we're following comments, I can picture these pompous religious leaders sitting there in the front row, arms folded, scouring at Jesus and saying that he can't do this. They were angry. This led them to rejecting Jesus in spite of the evidence that was clear for everyone to see. For the paralysed man was walking out in front of them, praising God. They knew that if they admitted Jesus had authority to forgive sins, then they had to accept that he was God and they were not prepared to do this. On the other hand, you have to admire the four guys who did what they did. They had two reasons for their action. They loved their friend and they believed Jesus could make a difference. As they struggled across town, carrying their burden, they demonstrated that they had faith and nothing would get in their way. Not the embarrassment of other people seeing what they were doing or the certain censure of the religious leaders who'd come to see Jesus or even the lack of passageway in the crowded house. They were going to get their friends to see Jesus come what may. Jesus sees this and responds because of their faith. You know, this really challenges me. When did I last have such determined faith for a friend or family member? When did I put my life on the line for someone else to meet Jesus? As we come to the close of today's vlog, can we be energised in our prayer and service for those around us to find Jesus? Perhaps we could begin by praying for our neighbours. Work around your street in your mind's eye and pray for those who live nearby, house by house. Then ask God to help you be creative and think what you could do to help them to meet Jesus. What's the barrier that needs breaking down? What's the roof that needs opening so that you can lower them to Jesus' feet? Shall we pray together? Thank you, Jesus, that you are able to do immeasurably more than all I can ask or imagine. Please help me to be more like the four guys who loved their needy friend and trusted you, Jesus, to make all things well. Please help me to pray and serve for those near and dear to me so that my faith might be helpful to them in finding forgiveness and healing. Amen. I'd love to know how you get on. But I'll see you soon and perhaps we can chat about it. Take care. Have a good day. God bless. Bye.